All right, here we go. Okay, good morning. Welcome to the special meeting of the Granada Hills North Neighborhood Council Outreach Publicity Committee. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, Graham is on, on the road, so we appreciate him joining us this morning as well. Um, I will take roll quickly here. Um, Alvin Waters. Here. Graham Zach. Here. Jason Lester. And <laughs> he's here. Okay. And Karen. Okay. And I don't see that we have any members from the public. So um, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we will start with Craig. And just a just a brief for the for the committee. We uh, this is uh, the city clerk. There are a lot of rules within the city. And so what happened, um, there was an original NPG filed under uh, the executive committee and that was rejected. So they had to return it back to us. As we know, it's often we have items that are returned to committee. So in this case, it came to us. So um, to just familiarize us, uh, re-familiarize us with EHR and how they came to be and what we're doing here, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Craig Delante. Hi, you. good morning. Us. Thank you, Karen. Uh, committee, thank you so much for giving me just a few minutes to, to brief you on what's going on. And I admire you guys on a Saturday morning doing so. So I have presented to your neighborhood council in the past. I am a resident, a long-term resident, 30 years of Porter Ranch. And, uh, you know, we could see our homes in uh, Granada Hills is a little bit off to, to, to my left, but, um, I, you can see my house from here, and this is this is the blowout. So um, the the origination of EHR or Environmental Health Research it is a it is a five hundred one c nonprofit. So we are uh, uh, qualified with the IRS and recognized by the state. Um, there, it, it was originated by three members of the CAG, the Community Advisory Group, that were sitting with Department of Public Health, who you've heard from many times about the progress and oftentimes very slow progress that they were making on the health study of the community impacted by the blowout. Um, because the, the results, here we are six, six and a half years later, and we know nothing more about our health than we did the day of the blowout. Uh, it just got to a point where several community members and CAG members felt they had to take matters uh, much more into their own hands for the sake of the community. And so what does that look like? Well, we created this 501C with the intent of doing what we've, what the CAG with the support of the community has always advocated for. And that was look at the people that live in the area that were impacted by this blowout and the chronic leakage from the field. And what, what we demanded and were not able to get was a clinical evaluation where we actually look at the people and see what health conditions there may be or not. But we wanna rule out, if there's none, fantastic. We wanna rule that out. But if there are, it's we feel it's morally responsible for to the community to be told, here's what we're observing. Here's the preponderance of cases of, whether it be a cancer, whether it be a pulmonary issue, whether it be an immune disease, uh, because no one is evaluated are the people around the blowout having a higher incident of certain diseases? Pulmonary would be an easy one, right? Because we were inhaling a lot of very nasty toxins um, and advising the community of what to watch out for and maybe some proactive or preventative health maintenance, if you will, that could be done. Now, we're not physicians, we're not gonna do this, but we are the 501C that is going to be doing the fundraising to go out and commission such studies. Just like any organization, we have to get started. And the reason we're getting started so late is because we held on to a promise that public health and other regulators would do this for us. That has not materialized. And the members, um, by the way, it's myself, Andrew Crown, and one of your own board members, Brian Allen, that have formed this 501C. So um, here we are. Um, talking with you today, and I'll get right to the point. I apologize for a long-winded background. Um, we, we have to get started. 
And we feel that we need uh, continued efforts and outreach to get the message that I just relayed to you out to more of the community members, but also to uh, potentially do surveys about your current health conditions, uh, which would not replace a true clinical study, but it will give us sort of, let's call it, give us a temperature of the community. So we see the funds that we're asking for go to outreach to make people aware, uh, to potentially do some survey of the current health conditions so that we have an assessment, if you will, of what the health burdens are. And also we're looking at doing uh, online meetings, potentially town halls with guest speakers, et cetera. So uh, that is where the, uh, you know, the modest funds of 3,500 are being asked for and where they would go. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I, I wanna keep it brief and I wanna thank you again for meeting with me this morning. You're muted. I'm gonna mute myself. Um, thank you very much. I um, did want to make a share with the share with the committee. I did attend several of the meetings with I might not be pronouncing his name correctly, uh, Craig. So let me know. Uh, Muntu Davis, Dr. Muntu Davis, mm -hmm. is from the Department of Health. Correct. And I attended. I'm gonna say maybe about three or four of those meetings, and it it has gone nowhere. And um, there was a large number of people at CAG meetings and so forth. So um, I understand more about how this has come to be and just wanted to share that with the committee. And then my question for you, Craig, is how can outreach, how do, how do, well, our neighborhood council, how do we work together with, with you for your, uh, you said surveys and, and, you know, some outreach you want to do. Do you have specific items now are you are those a work in progress? And um, we're, we're thinking of this because we do have a, a major shred event coming up at the end of the month. Okay. So if you you know to make sure we we have to make sure we handle this correctly because of, we don't want the conflict of interest situation. But um, if it was possible for you to either have some material available to add where the public is going to be coming by. So those, those, that's my one question. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Yeah, first of all, I wanna thank you. You did attend many of the CAG meetings and you asked very calm questions. You were, <laughs> you were not emotional, but I, but I could see that you were, you, know, you were like, where is this going? Um, and uh, yeah, you, you learned firsthand what we, have, we as a CAG have been dealing with for over two years and it was requests that just went, went by unanswered. So thank you for your contributions there. I, I really like how you asked about how do we partner? And we, we have discussed, and I'm glad we're, we're chatting now, you know, you, you guys have a, an arm that, whether it be the, the live events uh, or your, your newsletters or email lists, that we would very much like to partner with you on and develop materials that, of course, you would see in advance. And, you know, if it didn't meet your standards, it could be edited. Um, but to get the message out to your constituents and your stakeholders, about the efforts that are being made, uh, what to watch for coming in the future. Uh, we would much rather it not be a surprise <laughs> that uh, the, the clinical evaluations are being planned so people can start to anticipate them. So mm -hmm. yes, we would very much like to partner with your current outreach platform. Okay, all right, and I'll um, open it to committee. Um, please um, feel free to ask any questions you may have. Yeah, um, Craig Alvin here. Um, you know, thank you for your presentation. And um, you know, I could definitely see the the urgency in this. Um, and um, I actually I attended the I attended one of the one of the first meetings when the when the gas leak first happened. And um, you know, I could. I could definitely echo just kind of the lack of urgency that um, that that we've been seeing throughout this whole process. Um, there's a few a few people that I know personally who you know had to be relocated, you know, given the gas leak. But I'm just curious if you guys already have and kind of a a plan that's that's already outlined on paper just given that um 
I mean, it is close to the end of the month, but I mean, the clock's going to tick and, you know, our shred event is going to come around the corner. So, um, I guess I would just be curious as to, um, you know, when are your, like, when are your committee meetings? Um, you know, if you needed one of us to attend and collaborate with you, then I guess the other curious question that I did have, I mean, this, you know, isn't a deal breaker on my part. Just curious if you've inquired for other sources of funding, because I know that was one of the questions on your NPG. Okay, yeah, Alvin, and thank you. I, I do recall you being at one of the CAG meetings. And by the way, Dr. Davis that Karen mentioned, mentioned him to Davis, he's like the number two or number three guy at Department of Public Health. So we, the leadership was there, the actions were not. So we want to bridge that gap. So back to your question, Alvin, um, we would definitely uh, push to pull together some materials for your event at the end of the month, which, yeah, you're right. It's, you know, it's going to be upon us in no time here at all. So we'd very much like to work with your committee on what that would look like and how do we best communicate to that audience. Um, other funding, yes, definitely. We are going to be talking to certainly all of the adjacent NCs to Aliso because it is in our backyard, right? Um, and then we are also going to be seeking monies from uh, very large donors uh, because a clinical evaluation would be pricey. And um, uh, we are partnering, we are building our partnerships with a variety of folk that will help guide the, the clinical evaluations um, and what exactly that would look like. Uh, we are loosely using the template of what took place in the Gulf disaster, the, the horizon, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the huge Gulf spill, uh, oil spill in the Gulf. And precedent was set there. So we don't have to start from the very beginning. We can emulate what they did on a clinical evaluation and uh, um, mirror that and do it more applicable to the more inhalation rather than the touching of oil. So um, it's a matter of getting it started and pointed in the right direction. And that's, that's where we're at today. Okay. okay. And a committee, I have a, I have a, a thought and, and also Craig for, for your thoughts of uh, the anniversary of the blowout, you know, to plan something large or more detailed takes time. So uh, the actual anniversary of the blowout is October 15th, which is a Saturday, ironically, this year. It's October so, 23rd, but okay. Oh, the 23rd, I beg your pardon. That's all right. Um, I was looking at the Saturday before, my, my thought was, I'm a yeah. little, the, the coffee hasn't quite kicked in yet. Um, so what I was thinking is um, we do have a, uh, a street fair that, that is around that same time, but what we don't wanna do, which I think Jason and Graham and Alvin will um, test to is, we had some disruption at our street fair because of the gas, you know, of course the advocates, you know, against the gas leak and shut it down. But what we want, you want, um, I think we'll all agree that we want positive, um, we want positive thoughts and, and, we, and we want everything around the, your study to be positive and professional and not the the dis you know the the protesters and things like that because that that I, I think impedes the progress. So what I was suggesting and Graham Graham and all everyone uh, all the committee and Graham has some some special um, some talents as well uh, to have something either prior to that event on the fifteenth of some sort of outreach whether it would be at the O'Melveny Park which is kind of a good place for people to gather subject to what we you know have to do on as far as event coordination with the city and the council member's office but what are your some of your thoughts on something like that to to to, to in other words to maybe maybe uh, you know you have people who could have been impacted which may want to speak with someone maybe a, a desk it'll be outdoors regardless of whether COVID is up or down or around mm -hmm. it you know old melbourne is a beautiful place subject to weather conditions, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful place. So thoughts? Yeah, I think O'Melveny is, you know, because it is, it butts right up against the, um, the, the gas company's property. So uh, uh, that could be an excellent venue. Um, I, I think the, the, right, the right thing to do at that point 
So hopefully we'll be much further along with dates, et cetera, of the clinical evaluations. But even if we're not, I think it's a matter of <laughs> the community, ha there's been attrition in the community, the lack, lack of act, because nothing has happened. So I think a, a reigniting of the awareness is somewhat important, and that would be, I think, a good opportunity to do at the, the fair at the end of this month, the event at the end of this month, as well as anything you guys plan at O'Melveny. Is possible we could have a rep uh, a uh, I think you you may or may not have met Dr. Nordella. Yes. So, you yeah. know, no no promises because I can't commit to his schedule, but perhaps he could be um, present there to answer specific questions or you know it's a it's a fair so you really can't do like a presentation per se i would assume but maybe be there for a limited time to answer some group questions we we could consider something like that we'd like to work with you guys on what what would work best for that for that venue okay and um jason on signage and banners and things like that what what do you think is a good timeline what what time how much time would be needed to let's say uh, obviously design them. Um, Jason is that that source. So um, to maybe design them, have them um, have them decide where they would hang. Uh, maybe near the freeway was <clears throat> has been some suggestions as well. And maybe some of the intersections. This is really subject to the participation of other neighborhood councils so that we would know what type of of funds would be spent and then um, have an itemization of how, you know, how to allocate those funds to signage and to whether you would have an ad. The Granada Hills Monthly um, Magazine is an, another great source and very inexpensive. I think a page is, last time I checked was about $300. So, you know, just some of those avenues. So, um, thoughts? Uh, time frame for design, it's, uh, it's very simple design um so that that's something that we're talking about uh, an hour of you know messing around it they're, it's very simple we just have the logo some wordage it's nothing that's like um crazy to put together could use microsoft paint to throw something together uh, easy enough as far as the timeline for getting the banners made uh, the people who i was in contact with are leaving the state so uh they've packed up uh, their oh. operation uh, while they're moving. Um, so usually turnaround time is, I, I think, like about a week. I just don't know when they're going to be putting the, their printing machinery back together and everything. Um, so I have to find out, but they, they shut down operations last month and I uh, said so they're moving. So I um, just need to find out when they're going to be reopening shop because shipping is not a big deal for them to right. ship old banners. Sure. It's not a problem. Uh, I just need to find out when they're going to be doing printing again or find another source that's available. But I think the time frame was a, a week. I mean, printing is not a big deal either. So very fast. Okay. okay. So you could, so the, so the, and the pay, and, and how is the payment required? Because I know you said there's, I guess you two would have to work together, Craig and Jason would have to work on the actual, you know, once the design is decided and, and or and all the other neighborhood councils have to get involved too. So I, you may want to have a subcommittee for the designs Craig, with okay. the other neighborhood councils, maybe one person. Like if we like we like we have confidence in Jason. So maybe each neighborhood council will have a Jason and that will actually Porter Ranch does have a Jason, but he doesn't do that. Right. <laughs> so anyway, but just to just to keep it simple without a lot of cooks in the kitchen, as we all know how that can go. And then you all work together to um, establish a design that you're that you're that EHR is comfortable with. And then, um, you know, at least we have um, some, but uh, maybe have Jason take the lead if he's available. I don't want to volunteer his time without his permission, but he's um, I've seen some of his work and, you know, so. Okay. Any I, I, more questions? Yeah, I, I did. We were talking about the protesters at uh, the the fair. I saw them. Uh, it was a pretty decent sized group. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody know who these people are? They were obviously organized ahead of time. They had signs. Uh, this is obviously a very serious enough issue to them to organize that that gathering with uh, signage and everything Did, does anybody know who those people were I mean, i'm sure they're community members um but uh do we know uh, do we know who they were craig do you know who, who, no. they, who they actually are i mean i know who you're i i can see sure. them 
but I don't know their names. Sure. I can... Yeah, I, you know, I, I wasn't at the event. EHR did not sponsor that event, um, but there there is a, uh, a very focused couple of groups on Aliso and the disaster. Um, one of them is Safe Porter Ranch. Um, I which, think it was them. Okay, which has been a very vocal group in um, uh, Food and Water Watch, which is a national organization. They've also been uh, very prominent and, and focused and, and uh, organizing. I wasn't aware that it was disruptive to to the Granada Hills. Uh, I mean, they, they marched oh. through. Uh, I think there was a bullhorn involved. I don't remember. Uh, maybe it's my imagination. Uh, maybe somebody was just loud and I'm remembering a bullhorn. I was just thinking that these people that that were there obviously passionate enough, I'm sure that uh, they would be willing to assist in any way if they're willing to gather to protest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, put them to work. In other words, they would, they would, I'm sure they would stuff. be happy to uh, get involved in, in the process of putting things forward. If there's anything that, that uh, they could do. Um, well, like that we are in contact with them. Um, okay. They are uh, sort of partners with EHR um, and uh, uh, some of them have even contributed to EHR's nonprofit. So um, I, this will only work if we're connected with the community in a broad way um, right. and making sure that they have the information they need to participate in a clinical study if that happens. And then I also think it's really important to just manage everyone's expectations. When we, when we eventually find the research partner, it may be because the, event, the, the findings might be published, right, in a, in a journal, perhaps, a medical journal. So they would have to do it, um, they would have to do the sampling correctly. So to, statistically, it would have to be a, some probably a randomized sample of people that live in the community in proximity. And do we have the mix, the right mix of gender, et cetera, and, and uh, demographics. So it wouldn't be like put up a sign and then people rush in to have a clinical evaluation because it, it would be a if, likely a test and control group and that would have to be administered properly to do a, a, a scientific assessment of, is this community harder hit uh, with health issues than say a community far away that has a similar demographic that did not have this exposure? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, we have, uh, well, we have, I, everyone had, I believe every, I sent the NPG to everyone. I, I reviewed it. It's the, the, it was filled out correctly. And so um, I, um, I make a motion that we move this uh, forward to um, the Granada Hills uh, North Neighborhood Council Board for a vote. May I have a second? Second. Second. Two seconds. Okay, so we will move this forward. Mr. Galanti, so you will be, uh, we'll see you again on Tuesday. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys taking time. And if it's thank not you. me, it'll be Andrew Crown. So, but okay. uh, uh, I'll okay. try and be there as well. Thank you so, so much for your time. Keep us posted. If you could please do us a favor. Uh, and as you secure additional funding, if you could please just let us know so that we can do an update because as the committee knows, when, when we have um, a conflict with a board member, that board member cannot speak on this at all, that being Brian. So, you know, you know, we have to, or I have to take the lead and then we have to, you know, work together um, um, on these issues. But it's, we're all interested. Um, we've all lived in the community for a number of years. Graham, Graham is a newer member of the community, but still important for, you know, he's very in, in connected to everything going on here. So, um, we, uh, it will be, uh, it, it, I, I think this is finally going to get some answers the community has been waiting for since 2015. I couldn't agree more, Karen. Is it okay if we go through you with keeping you posted and you can disseminate Please. as sure. appropriate? Thank yes. you. We'll do, okay. great idea. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. And uh, you, can, you, can, you can stay with us or you can uh, um, enjoy the rest of your day. I, I am gonna peel off. I have some family stuff to do today. But, oh, yes, uh, Graham. I, Oh, Graham has a question. Yes, Graham. Uh, yeah, just one thing. I was just looking at this MPG, um, and it says the expected completion date of June, the end of June of this this year, um, which is coming up pretty quickly. Um, I just wanted to maybe ask one more question of, you know, you secure these funds. I mean, is this actually going to be 
used. I mean, we were talking about event dates and things in the future in October. Um, so I'm just kind of uh, curious as to what this would be used for by the end of June. Yeah, I, I believe uh, uh, that was a placeholder to bring about uh, some some of the more near-term deliverables. Very good question, Graham. And what we see in the very near term is a development and design of a survey, uh, a health assessment survey that we're working with Dr. Nardell and some others on. To um, and then we're you know we're looking at options whether it be phone banks. And you know we all get these phone calls we don't even answer anymore. So we're looking at alternatives, okay. uh, whether that be web-based or direct mail. Uh, we're looking at those those. Uh, uh, options and that would be more of the near-term immediate delivery. Uh, what's in it for the Granada Hills Neighborhood Council? Uh, we we hope we write this questionnaire in such a way that it would pass all HIPAA and restrictions as such because that's important and and that we can disseminate the information back through the, the neighborhood council or through our uh, uh, general outreach efforts to advise your community here are or or not the health issues that are being um, uh, manifested in your community. So we see that as the way to push it back out through your funds, how you are serving your constituents. Gotcha. Is okay, that that's right? good. Um, and I just wanted to say also in regards to the protesting and things at the fair, um, you know, I I support those people that are speaking out and, and putting that out there. Yes, it can be disruptive, but I also think approaching them um, and you guys partnering with them to come up with some solutions and have them work with you in partnership. I think those that's a great thing. I think that's what anyone that is protesting any issue ever wants to be done is to connect with the leaders in the community and in the local level on up uh, to get things, uh, you know, either looked at and taken into consideration and or changed and, and amended. Um, so I think that's a really good thing. And I also think that, um, you know, it would be important to involve, as you said, you know, your Porter Ranch community and other communities around, including us, um, to, you know, secure some more funding or, you know, uh, be a part of this because obviously bigger is better um, in this situation where we're, surveying the entire area for, you know, uh, health issues from the Aliso Canyon fallout. Um, and I, I, and the last thing is just that I fully support what you guys are doing. I think it is important um, in health respects to our community. So thanks for doing that. Well, thank you, Graham. I appreciate your, your, uh, your observations. And uh, um, I will say they might be loud and all that, but they some are somewhat effectual. Uh, just last week, Senator Stern, um, our senator for the state of California, um, has got a bill that he's looking to pass that will shut down Elisa. And the State Porter Ranch and Food and Water Watch have been instrumental in helping him guide the language of that, of that bill, as well as they have been instrumental in supporting community uh, activities to support that. So, yep, sometimes, sometimes loud and obnoxious is... is is necessary, but it has, to, as Karen eloquently said, it has to be productive. So, um, yeah, we, loud and we are, proud. Pardon me. Loud, proud, and productive. Yeah, you know, it has to be. It has to be productive and inclusive. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, so we're we're going about this a little bit differently. I think we're going about it with here's the health, here's the health, here's the health. Let's make sure that we get those questions answered because it's my firm belief that. If we demonstrate that this facility is a health hazard, the closing of the facility can very, very quickly follow because they're unlikely going to close this facility just because it's inconvenient to us, right? There has to be a reason for change. So we, we hope that the study will uncover if there is a reason for change. And if there is, if we're okay health wise, then we can all breathe easier, right? We can relax a little bit. So right. that's not so critically important to do this. And I'm sorry, Graham, you're gonna say something? No, I was just saying, right, I was agreeing with you. Um, and especially with the advent of newer renewable resources for energy, um, you know, I, I think it's, it could be time. Who knows what the future holds, but yeah, I agree with you. Well, you know, I think I think those planets are aligning, right? If, uh, 
there's a push for <clears throat> movement away from such facilities. And then if we, if this community is harmed, all of us need to know that. I mean, that's the driver. We need to know if, if we have health concerns and how we approach uh, our oncologist, God forbid, or just our general practitioner on, hey, I'm, my blood counts, I, I'm, I'm anemic, why? Okay, so then you can, you can address it. Um, but, the, but, but Graham, you're right, the planets are aligning. And uh, uh, so we, we should, it's, there's an opportunity to, to ride the momentum of this wave. And we should take advantage of it. Right. And I have one more question. I just realized, Craig, before you go, uh, there was recently a redistricting of the supervisorial yeah. districts. And um, I, I'm wondering between, uh, we have it was Supervisor uh, Barger and now it's Supervisor Kuehl. Do you, are you going to keep them notified? Or are you not, just based on the non-responsiveness of the Board of Supervisors, uh, just do you, are, how, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, we are already in dialogue with uh, Supervisor Kuehl's office um, and we have presented them, the CAG, I should say who, who the CAG, the Community Advisory Group has had three meetings and we're anticipating another one. And we have, we have really pressed for action from Supervisor Kuehl. Now, as you know, she's on her way out, right? Yes. So we are hoping that some a person that's on their way out isn't going to be so encumbered by the politics, you know, the influences of a donor. So CalGas, Sempra makes significant contributions. So we're hoping that they have their objective lenses on. We've already had several meetings with her staff. They promised us, again, it's a promise, that they're bringing this, there are issues to a supervisor Kuehl. <clears throat> they mentioned that there'd be a meeting with her. Um, we made it really clear. We don't want a meeting. We want actions, right? Um, I feel like Zelensky, you know, we don't need a ride out of Ukraine. We, we need, we need airplanes, right? So yeah. a meeting with her was, was not what our end game is. Our, our ask of her is two things, very specific two things. If you want to save the $25 million health study that's happening by the Department of Public Health, two things need to happen. It has to require clinical evaluations, which by the way, it does not right now. It does not require clinical evaluations. Um, and subpoena the gas company for what was in this plume. So uh, we are very laser focused uh, as far as the CAG is with uh, Kuehl, we've had good meetings, but what we've learned, and I'll share with all of you, words are cheap, actions are scarce. And we're getting a lot of words and a lot of support, but not much actions. So we're, we're, we're pushing hard for actions. And really, legitimately, that is why we're doing our own 501c, so the community can move towards action and actually get a clinical study going rather than waiting for yeah, it's been six and a half years, and we don't have any answers. Yeah. I apologize, yeah. I went off on a tangent. But... No, that's okay. No, but it's but this is very helpful for all of us because we had a brief overview, and we of course we those of us who live here have been through it all. But just to make sure we're all we all have an understanding of you know how we got here and where we're going and and what needs to be done. So it's a I, I will I will leave you with one one other thought. Uh, you, uh, your neighborhood council is leading, in my opinion of all the surrounding neighborhood councils on this issue. I mean, th this is the biggest blowout in US history, right? And it happened in our, literally our backyards. Um, there, for whatever reason, there's not a galvanizing of the NCs. Maybe we can provide that, that glue. I don't know, but uh, um, reach out to your counterparts. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we've, we've, we've discussed this periodically that I, I th our, our neighborhood council I think because it seems to be more professional, and I'm not saying no one else, the others aren't professional, but I, we just are very cohesive. And um, the port, you know, we have our sister council, Porter Ranch, and other neighborhood councils. Um, we just seem to be stellar in our collaborative efforts with one another, which mm -hmm. is, you know, I mean, nothing against anyone else, but we work very hard and we're very diligent about our work. I mean, we're volunteers. I mean, if we're going to do this, we might as well do it correctly. And um, I'm always at a class, you know, trying to be better, you know, and um, it's, 
it's put our it's put our neighborhood council out there in many other ways. <laughs> so um, we are, are quite recognized. So thank you for acknowledging us. We yep. we're a great teamwork. Teamwork to dream work makes the dream work is our little motto here. So congratulations to you all. That's not an easy easy accomplishment, but you it 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 is it is observable. So just so you know. Thank you so much. Well, thank it's you. good to see you, and we will see you again on Tuesday. Excellent. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Have a great weekend, Craig. You too. All of you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Bye bye. I am, I am going to leave you guys to your meeting. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much for that fantastic um, um, discussion. And uh, so we'll move on to um, item E. Just uh, quickly on the, um, the shred event. We uh, we received uh, I designed the, you know the flyer and um, the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment actually put it in their newsletter and invited all Angelinos to come um, for the shreddable. So just with that being said, we definitely need all hands on deck if you know as humanly possible. Um, Jason, if Sasha is available, it'd be wonderful to have her out and join us and maybe bring a couple of her 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 BFFs would be awesome if that's okay. And um, Graham, do you think you'll be in town that day? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to be in town, so I'll, I'll be there. Oh, good. Okay, great. We'll be there. Okay. So um, any other thoughts? Um, we have the usual setup. We have our pop-up. We have some new giveaways. We've got stadium bags and a variety of things. Um, hopefully, um, I'm going to speak to the city attorney about EHR and Brian as far as if he has to come and set up and leave, or if the maybe EHR can be um, like on the before the entryway and pass pass out information or after. So I'll verify that with the city attorney because we we want to avoid that conflict of interest issue. So any thoughts, suggestions, recommendations? Um, I'm definitely not opposed to it, but <clears throat> if we're expecting you know better attendance than the last time i just think it's important that um like somebody's doing the giveaway feeling you know working with the giveaways uh -huh. while um there's somebody working with you know helping people out of their cars because we just don't want it to be a situation where somebody's trying to balance doing the giveaways and helping right people with the cars at the at the same time. I mean, I'm just kind of speaking from experience from one of the prior shred events where mm -hmm. I had to help people with the cars and help them get, you know, get their name on the list at the same time. It could get a little overwhelming. Okay. That that's a good suggestion. So I think what we'll do, we'll mobilize that morning, um, you know, maybe around well, I'll be we'll be there a little bit earlier. And then we'll just mobilize based on who we have, and maybe uh, actually good point. Maybe Sasha, Sasha and her and, and a couple of her friends could do the giveaways, and then we do have two drivers from the truck, as well as all of us. So that should keep the flow. Um, we'll uh, get a get a sign for um, Wade Hunter if he wants to participate with the arrow. It's not mandatory, but if he wants to participate, that's great. And then a sign off the freeway directing people where to go and um, one on the corner of um, Shoshone and Rinaldi, that should be enough. So we'll see, so we'll have to order from someone. Jason, who do you recommend we order from since your people are in, in moving right now? Uh, for banners, you mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I have, I have to reach out to them and see maybe they're getting everything back together next week. Uh, I don't know what the time frame. I just saw that they'd shut everything down and Okay. Well, no worries. You know, I can order. I ordered one for my reunion and it took about like four days or something. So, you know, that's a, usually it's a pretty fast because uh, they're just printing it. Okay. Um, um, I don't know if this is the place to discuss this, but you just uh, reminded me uh, as far as Wade, uh, I'm a little bit confused. Uh, he's back in our meetings. Is he Back on council, or is this something that has to be discussed? He's not. He's not. Um, he served on the plum committee. He was there. He he was on the board when I arrived, and he uh, resigned after um, Oscar and I um, came. You know, were voted in as president, vice president. 
can't really say too much about it. I mean, he does participate in public safety and he's around the community. He is the chair of the um, the uh, Sunshine Canyon where I, I serve as a commissioner on that, but. Um, so he's not technically back on the council. He's not, and uh, we've actually discussed this. Um, we're, I mean, it, it's okay, it's just the four of us, of the four of us, but um, we we do need to keep some order there. So, I was just getting confused. I was like, you know, so are other people. <laughs> I have You're no problem with, I have no issue with Wade at all. I was just like, is Wade back on? And I yeah, just... yeah, yeah, I was also going to say, uh, mention about that. Um, I do think it's important that we do maintain some order and follow, you know, like our bylaws and things for people speaking, because then that I, I just it's not like I don't want them to. I think it's great, but right. I think we just open up a precedent of people from the community thinking that that's how it is. And then so they can just, you know, instead of outside of the public comment. Um, right. So I just feel like we need to not let that happen. And if he wants to be back on the board, I think we need to go about you know voting them back in or doing so i don't know how that exactly would work but um i just feel like it's kind of important to follow that um so yeah 100 correct and, and as you notice from um whenever i've hosted a meeting uh, that doesn't happen <laughs> because it's just you know you get your you get your time um i did watch i do monitor the city council meetings i you know, since i've been working from home it's actually been a great education to, to, to pay it forward to, to the whole board is in, in, in speaking and in presentation in, in order and um, keeping that public comment phase in order. And once your uh, two minutes are up, that's it. On an agenda item, I actually learned from Sid Gold at his meeting, he gives um, a minute and a half for each person to speak on an agenda item. So I suggested to Oscar that we, that we do that as well. Um, our, our meetings run short. I mean, we're, we, it, Craig was interesting, so it went a little longer because he was interesting, but otherwise we would have been about done. So I think it's a matter of just as I have experienced and the classes I've taken to your, to, to your, to everyone's point, to your point, Graham and Jason, is that that's how they teach it at the department. My very, one of my very first classes uh, done as a neighborhood council leader class was keeping order of your meetings and knowing your times and having a timekeeper in. So you you are 100% correct. Okay, and then, so on our very last item, um, uh, we had a speaker series that we started in 2020, um, social justice speaker series. And, uh, but there's other, just in kind of reimagining that speaker series and bringing some value to the community, that's just, kind of like basic information about things that impact our lives. And uh, based on our recent loss of our beloved um, sushi and thinking of that experience and, 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 and pet ownership in general because of the pen, due to the pandemic, um, that we start a speaker city series on different topics and just start with, um, with, with the vacations coming and uh, people get, they either go on vacation and leave the dog or take the dog or, 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 or the cat needs care and there's other types of animals, but this is really um, centered around dogs and cats primarily. So just kind of some helpful hints from experts, uh, Je Jeff Mauser, who's on one of the neighborhood councils, who was an advocate for reopening the uh, West Valley Animal Shelter, uh, the, the Lap of Love um, Hospice, who actually assisted us and is, was recommended by the Granada Chamber um, to me. And uh, so, so something like, so just the keynote, keynote speakers and something helpful that's friendly, that has no kind of partnership, partisanship kind of issues at all. It's just, just, just helpful information to help people make the right decision um, because it is a responsibility people sometimes don't take seriously. That's true. So you all think that's a good idea? for a news and then we can everyone come up with an idea so that's mine next one you know someone decide what the next one would be um it would be a saturday we could or it could be a special event uh, we could make it a special event on an evening uh, we want um whatever works for everyone's schedule is is what's most appropriate so we can work on a time with that and with the experts involved um so uh, but i think it'd be something pleasant and just kind of set us aside from the other neighborhood councils again 
like Craig said. Yeah, there was a lot of participation last time. Yes. So it was, uh, I, I forgot what the total number of people was, uh, was it that attended, but I remember it was a uh, pretty good amount. I and mean, there were a it lot was, of- It was, yeah. And uh, people from out of the area, uh, some people who were running for office were there as well. And uh, it was, uh, the notoriety was, it was good. It really yeah. was. So this one, um, animals, people are very passionate about their animals. Um, you know, but it's, I think it's helpful because of our own experience with, you know, um, it's a commitment. And so kind of looking, zooming out the lens and, okay, I, the puppy's very cute, but do I understand that this is a commitment of, you know, somewhere between 10 to 15, maybe 20 years in some cases. And the, when you look at, the, when we look at the puppy pictures now, and then to watch her health decline and, and, and to, you know, to have to, you know, make that decision. Those are hard things. So it's, it's like you start, you have, it, it's a whole responsibility. They have a life, they have a schedule, they have socialization, just like we do. So yeah, so that's just trying to think of something uplifting. So, so if everyone's okay with, with that, um, we are, uh, we can uh, take committee member announcements. Anything on your mind? Any topics, suggestions? Um, yeah, uh, just about the parks. You and I had talked briefly about the signage um, or the display cases and things. Um, so I did follow up with her, Mirka, um, and just waiting to hear back on that. Um, I mean, I know they were, you know, Council Member Lee was really interested in doing that and he was pursuing funding. So. I am still waiting to hear back on that. Otherwise, um, yeah, I think we should take it into our own hands if we can and try okay. to, you know, bring it before the council soon. But I'll circle back when she gets back to me on that. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Mr. Lester? Uh, completely unrelated to everything. Don't hold sneezes in. I tore a muscle <laughs> in my throat. Oh my you God. tore a muscle in your throat? Yep. So uh, this is week three, uh, and uh, I was suffering pretty badly. I had to go to a doctor, and they said they can't do surgery because the muscles are too fibrous, and they would just shred if they try to suture them. It was the middle of the night. I had a quick sneeze coming. Everybody was asleep. I held it, just popped, and I felt my Adam's apple, like a tearing in my Adam's apple. So don't hold sneezes back. Don't hold oh, hope you're going to be okay, man. That's not I'm, I'm recovering. I, it didn't affect my voice. It didn't hurt to eat or, or drink anything. So it was okay. It wasn't disrupting my life, but uh, I couldn't blow my nose for two weeks without horrible pain in my throat. Uh, any pressure <gasps> in my throat was right in the Adam's apple, right in the front. It was like somebody sticking their thumb, shoving their thumb into my Adam's apple. It was really bad. Oh. And then researching it online because I was terrified in the middle of the night what I just did to myself. I found that some guy actually tore a hole in his throat doing that. So, oh my God. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's an education. Uh, I'm so sorry, though. So, so are you in pain now? No, oh, actually, a uh, funny thing when I went to the the doctor, he you know he's prodding around, making sure that there was some, wasn't something else going on that weakened my throat to let that happen uh, i actually felt better the next day uh, and they, they sent a they scoped my throat and uh i think the the, the prodding around it was like uh, acupressure uh, kind of uh helped because i was not like poking my throat i didn't want to make anything worse and i think him doing that actually uh helped a little bit but uh, he said he they've seen their office has seen their share of people holding in sneezes and tearing a muscle in the throat it's he said it's very common as long as they didn't see anything else which they didn't there was no concern he said it can take eight weeks to to heal and you'll just have to write it out i was hoping i'd end up with some like amazing singing voice or something after life, but that doesn't seem to be the case join Graham, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well my daughter i said i told sasha i said if i heal and i've got a golden voice you're gonna see me on american idol <laughs> but not the case didn't, didn't affect my voice. It wasn't vocal cords. It was just a muscle in the front of the throat. So don't Amazing. hold the sneezes in. That, that would it. be something to share at the, uh, on the announcements at the board meeting too, because that's important, you know, because I think people are like, 
oh, I don't want to sneeze or, you know, because they're in a meeting or something like that. It's like, forget that. <laughs> yeah, that's not worth it. Well, next time I'm waking everybody up in the house. You know, that's, <laughs> that's their problem if I have to sneeze. Right, exactly. And Mr. Waters? Um, yeah, I guess this isn't um, directly related to the board, but, you know, ever since I was at the street fair, um, you know, as a, you know, after I served my time, of course, I got the benefit from a lot of the activities and, um, you know, I won uh, during the street fair, I won uh, about, I went to the, to this um, booth called the the row house and um because there's a brand there's a um uh there's a gym in granada hills so um i um took advantage to work with one of the coaches to kind of learn the the ins and outs of rowing just briefly so then i participated in the three classes and i've been a member since then and it's um it's, I just want to say, you know, if you're looking for kind of a unique workout that's engaging with the community, um, I would encourage any of you to, to check out the class because it's kind of interesting because it's actually, it's not just the, it's not just a workout on your arms. It's actually a full body workout. Um, so it covers both muscle and it gives you, and it gives you cardio. The class is usually about 45 minutes, and um, it's, I guess the best way to describe it is, you know, it, it kind of has that sense of community where you're working out with people, it motivates you, the coach, you know, really pushes you to your limits. Um, the best way to describe rowing physically from what I've learned from my coaches, it's like doing, it's like doing a deadlift, so you have to think kind of in that context, but it's a lot of fun. You're rowing to music. So, I mean, you're having fun while you're staying in shape. So definitely check it out. It's the row house in Bernada Hills. Thank you very much. Well, I have um, three th quick things. Um, I attended a meeting um, hosted by uh, the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment and the topic of going back to working in person, uh, meeting in person came up. And uh, Council, Council President Nori Martinez was there as well. And the uh, I'm, I'm happy that Raquel had put through um, my one of my main concerns that I have been advocating for is for us to not do that if they can't provide us with some form of security. Um, there's too much we haven't met in person since before George Floyd was murdered and before the 2020 elections and things have drastically changed. So uh, there are a lot of problems, I mean, from every level about these rogue people, sh rogue, uh, pro I mean, just, just hate groups um, showing up at um, elected officials' houses. So there's some legislation on that, but for meeting in person for right now, um, we still are not meeting in person. Although the department's trying to push that, we're pushing back on a number of, of, of levels because of that and the timing and they might lose board members. And then on some a fun note, um, I'm um, honored to announce that my uh, cousin Tina was promoted to Lieutenant of the Santa Monica Police Department. And um, she will be sworn in on Wednesday. And uh, interestingly, um, they had the party last weekend and I had a basil margarita for the first time. It was, they had some kind of mobile bar there. So if you're looking for some kind of unique experience and you get that mobile bar out there and they have these basil and all these exotic type flavors. So that's, uh, oh, and Porto's is opening. Uh, Porto's in Northridge is finally opening. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> and that's it. And thank you very much for um, a wonderful meeting. And we're uh, we are ready to adjourn at ten fifty five a.m. All right. Bye, everyone. Sounds good. Have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you so much, Graham, for joining us. I hope. Where are you right now? Um, I'm just in the midst of 
getting packing up loading getting ready to leave <laughs> like oh, doing a whole bunch of stuff so it's it's okay. all good no worries okay thank you so much for um taking the time to join us really appreciate your participation um, all good thank you it was a great thank meeting you. okay thank you and mr okay. lester thank you very much i hope you feel better thank you uh, almost 100 percent, but it's, it's still there i'm just not pushing my luck by doing anything strenuous to my throat because right I'm getting better, so. Okay, all right, very good. Well, thank you so much. Have a great weekend, everyone, and uh, go get them, Graham. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.